Hey guys, I'm back with my video response to episode two, two, three. And that was a cool episode. Good to have all three hosts on there. You know, I really like it when all three hosts are there. I know the whole point of having a third host was so you guys could have a break. But it's cool to get, you know, three opinions rather than two. But anyway, let's get straight into this. So one of the things I want to talk about first is the 8-bit fuzz. I thought that was a pretty cool review and I like the look of the pedal because I was a bit of a Nintendo nerd as a kid. And I, and I had the, um, actually I, don't, I didn't have an original a Nintendo. I played my friends, which I borrowed for ages, but I had a Super Nintendo and I had the um, original Game Boy. Watch out. So anyway, you know, thinking about the effect, yeah, it's a weird effect, and yes, it's um, you know, it's it's kind of you know out there in, in its sound. But I was just reading the forum, and, and J Man posted up something about it, saying that you know it's not something that we, you would really use prominently in a song. It's just it's just something that you would have to to layer the textures, you know, to add add a little bit here and there, you know, have a few weird sounds, and I think that's great. Now, it's not something I would buy because, you know, I can get a lot of different sounds with all the effects I've got, I mean, the mountains of pedals and um, that rack unit of effects thing behind me. But, you know, I, th I think it, it does have its place in, uh, in some music. Now, there are a few things that I don't like about the company. One, they're ripping off the Nintendo, but I think it's cool. But, okay, let, let's talk about this. So you've got the basic model for whatever price, one knob, got to find its sweet spot, which is just stupid and annoying in my opinion. Second thing. $25 for an LED? That is ridiculous. That is just ridiculous, stupid, and greedy of these. I'm going to say these assholes, they're going to charge you $25 for an LED. An LED is a, is a few cents, is like 30 cents to a dollar for a really nice one. And then you just add a resistor on there for two cents, a bit of wire, bang! Instant LED. Like $25 fucking dollars. That is just stupidly ridiculous. You would have to be completely, I'm just going to say, retarded to pay $25 for an LED. But anyway, that's my gripe. And then, you know, to add these extra controls, you know, for, for extra money, you know, they're just, they're just adding, you know, a pod instead of a resistor. And, and I think, yeah, I know they've got to make money, but they just charge way too much for that, you know, because honestly, guys, parts are worth jack shit. You know, making a pedal isn't very, very expensive at all. Um, and once you get, you know, your circuit board down and that sort of thing, it's not very time consuming. The only thing that's time consuming is painting the thing. Now, let's be honest about this. So, um, yeah, you know, I think it was kind of a cool effect. A bit, it's, it's useful, but then useless in other ways. But again, just because they want to charge $25 for an LED, I would never buy anything from them, period. Um, but anyway, speaking of 8-bit, have you guys checked out the 8-bit um, version of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon? It's kind of cool, you can only listen to it a couple of times, it's good for a laugh, you know, it's all in Nintendo sort of sounds. It's the whole album, somebody redid it that way, and it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so what have I got next on my little list here? Oh, this is something interesting that PT was saying, what leg do you rest your guitar on when you sit down and play? Well, like um, uh, Pipes and Pappy said, it's either. Most of the time I play like a classical player would play. So I mean, I'm right-handed, I would have the guitar lean on my left leg. The main reason is because you've, I've got easier access to the higher frets. You know, I may not go up there all the time, but you know, it's just easy to get to the whole fretboard. You're also sitting in a more upright position, you know, you're not slouched over, so it keeps your back straight. And it keeps your hand in a more uh, sort of a, you know, a relaxed sort of normal position rather than if you've got the guitar here, now your hand will sort of be, be bent over a little bit, but if you've got the guitar here, your hand is sort of in its natural sort of position. And one of the big advantages, I think, of having it on your left leg, if you're right-handed, or having it, you know, vice versa, is that when you're playing like this, when you stand up and play, the transition isn't as great. Whereas if you play with your right leg and you never stand up and play, you'll never be able to have your strap low, and you'll have to have it strapped up to your neck and look funny. Because let's face it, that's what it's about, straps low. Um, in saying that, I once had a guitar teacher that I only had two lessons with. I got in there, put my guitar down on my left leg. Um, it was my, it's my Black Ibanez RGT. Started playing, you know, a couple of riffs here and there. Things he was showing me weren't very hard. And he's like, look, man, rock players don't play with a like, classical guitar. He goes, put it on your right leg. He goes, it's just not cool. I was like, all right, dickhead. 
whatever. So they'll the end of those lessons. So, you know, but um, I favor the left leg uh, mainly because I just, I wouldn't say it's easier because, you know, especially with your right hand, you know, you've got to keep it up here. I've got to stop saying, you know, you've got to keep it up here. And it's more, it's coming out, out of your body a little bit more. So it's a little bit more difficult rather than having it tucked in. You can go with some really fast picking and um, be really, really accurate because you're not moving that much and you're sort of tucked in. But eventually, if you start playing like this, in my opinion, you'll find it more relaxing to play, easier, less strain on your back as well because you're in the natural upright position rather than slouching. And you've got easier access to the high frets. And another bonus, when you stand up, the transition isn't as, as big. That's just, that's just my opinion. Um, I'm going to try to stick to playing like this. I can play both ways, but sometimes I um, you know, just favor one or the other. So anyway, let's get to the gal, Mike Ness of Social D. I honestly haven't heard much of Social Distortion. Uh, when I first got into sort of rock style music, I was listening to punk, like I was listening to Pennywise, um, you know, a bit of the older Blink-182, I don't like the newer stuff, I think it's rubbish. Uh, but Descendants, no, I loved like Offspring, you know, that like really changed my life, that sort of thing. Um, and then I progressed into, into metal and then like really heavy metal dark, you know, sort of death metal. So um, I never really got a chance to listen to much you know, Social Distortion. I ne I've never heard of them until I listened to the podcast, which might sound strange to some people, but, you know, I have heard um, uh, some of their music and it is pretty good. It's something I, I could listen to. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's kind of, it's catchy. It's got a nice feel, nice groove to some of the stuff I've heard. And, um, yeah, you know, um, good to hear, Pyth, you're still very passionate about them. I could hear that on the episode. Uh, speaking of the interview, we were talking about his gear and that sort of stuff. He actually did an interview with Premier Guitar. I was reading some of that uh, not too long ago. And they said he plays an SD1, not, an, not a DS1, but who really knows? I mean, they, they may know a bit better because they're actually interviewing him, but who knows? So I thought that was cool. And Pipes, it's okay to touch PT. I give you permission. If you want to touch him, you go ahead. Um, so let's just get back to the end of this. Um, outro track was awesome. I really liked that with PT's vocals, and I believe that was J Man playing. But um, anyway, let's get to what I want to talk about as well. I want to rant about this. It was on the teardown finding pots at guitar shops. I know, pipes, you cannot find them. Those idiots, most of them don't know what you're even talking about. Then you tell it. Now, don't even try to talk to them about taper, they won't know what the hell you're talking about. Uh, the best thing you can do is, I think, is just buy them online. That's where I get mine from. Um, or go to an electronic store and um, hope you can find a decent one that'll fit the knobs you're putting on there or the bushings and that sort of thing. But no, I feel your pain, dude. I feel your pain. It's um, strange, you know, guitar retail shops, I guess, are just retail shops. They're there to be cool. They're there to make money. And they're going to make money out of selling equipment, not parts, I guess. Now, which is a shame because I don't think enough guitar shops cater for people that you know want to do do their guitars up, want to mod things themselves, or even want to get your guitar repaired. There's a guitar store that um, I took my guitar to once, and they and they fucked it. They fucked it. You know, I was lucky they didn't snap the truss truss rod. I took it to another place and they fixed it up for me. But they don't actually use their own guitar tech. They get a guy that comes in on a Sunday of all days and does all the guitar work for them. So if you have a complaint, they won't even ring him. They'll just wait until the, the next Sunday because they're that much of a crappy shop. I'll never go there again. They're, ne they're called Bam Bam Music, Blacktown, Sydney, Australia. They, they're, they're, they're shit. Never ever go in there again. I've bought guitars from there in the past. I don't know, they changed management. The staff are just, just pigs, to be honest. They're rude, arrogant pigs. That's my rant. I should probably stop putting crap on those guys and end this. But guys, once again, fantastic episode. Can't wait for the next and I'll catch you later.